When Jeff Ullman and I wrote our 1972 book entitled Foundations of Computer Science, we titled the first chapter, Computer Science, the Mechanization of Abstraction. In some sense, abstractions are at the core of any field and abstractions and algorithms are at the heart of computer science. So it was just a natural area to begin our exploration. We teach different kinds of abstractions in different ways. After we worked together on compiling, our interests pretty much diverged. Al remained much more a compiler person. I got more interested in databases. We sort of decided we would each focus on the kinds of abstractions that really interested us. So that's how the, the, the paper evolved, along with this notion of the, that there's a taxonomy of, of, of abstractions. Any mathematical or conceptual idea is an abstraction. Uh, in computer science, however, abstractions have an additional component, which is some sort of programming language, or, or at least a set of operations that operate on the underlying uh, data component. Jeff and I created a rudimentary taxonomy with four different kinds of abstractions. We distinguish these four classes based on uh, why they are needed and the role that they, they play in, in programming. The taxonomy includes fundamental abstractions like trees and graphs that are used in many applications. It includes abstract implementations like hash tables and linked lists that are used as basic tools. It includes declarative abstractions like regular expressions and context-free grammars that raise the level of programming and it includes computational abstractions like Boolean circuits and the random access machine that are used to describe computers and their components. In our paper, we illustrate the impact of these abstractions in the design and implementation of programming language compilers and big data systems. Well, first of all, the use of regular expressions and context-free grammars, which are declarative abstractions, together with their abstract implementations like finite automata and uh, shift-reduced parsers, they really revolutionized the way compilers were built. They uh, essentially enabled us to do in an afternoon what used to take months. In the past few decades, quantum mechanics has allowed us to develop a powerful computational abstraction called quantum circuits that is now used for encoding algorithms for programming quantum computers in all, most all modern quantum programming languages. Let's think about how the two big external drivers of, of computer science progress are evolving. You have the new applications on the demand side and new developments in hardware on the supply side. Now, these suggest new fundamental abstractions and, and new computational abstractions which in turn encourage computer scientists to invent new abstract implementations and, and new declarative abstractions. Uh, I was amazed at how the MapReduce abstraction revolutionized how we think about parallel algorithms on, on large-scale data. But now uh, there are new accelerator chips, and these may drive new computational abstractions. One intriguing area is the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques to create software directly from data and in some cases spoken language. And if these techniques become successful, it could revolutionize how we create software in the future. When you offer the right abstraction to people, uh, things really can become easier. You know, there seems to be lots of new ways to it's not all that easy to do, and some invention of abstractions might turn out to help.